The Futuro house is such a cool example of the Jetsons-like futuristic homes that people in the 60s thought that we would be living in today. Only a handful of these were ever built, and today we're about to meet a man who has done an incredible job of renovating one of these futuristic homes from the past and bringing it back to life. Good day, Nick. How's it going, mate? Yeah, good, man. Yeah. Very well, thank you. And, dude, I have to say, I'm really excited to be here because this is my first time actually getting to see a Futuro house in person. I'm so glad you can be here to see it. So, first of all, can we talk about the history of the Futuro house? Because it has a really interesting story, doesn't it? Yeah. So, they were built in 1968 by Maddie Saronen in Finland. Uh, they were designed to be a ski chalet, and they were meant to be the house of the future. Everyone was meant to have one, and you were meant to just be able to pull it apart and ship it off to another destination when you felt like it. Very cool. And these are quite rare, eh? Something like only 100 of these were ever built in the world. Yes, 100 were built and 12 of them were in New Zealand and there's about 60 left worldwide. Wow, so it really is quite rare, isn't it? Very rare, I'm yeah. very lucky to be standing in front of one right now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And can you tell me about what it was that made you want to buy one and undertake this renovation project? It really comes down to my dad. He used to drive me and my brother past one of these when we were kids, and I used to be obsessed with it. I had no idea what it was. It just looked like a spaceship to me as a child. And later on in life, when I grew up and I, I was like, what, what was that thing that dad used to drive us past, you know? And then I looked into it, did some research, found out it was a Futuro house, and then I made it my mission to go and buy one. And here we are. And here we are. <laughs> now, I have lots of questions about the house, but before we talk about the house, wow, your garden here is absolutely incredible. Thank you. Yeah, there's so much going on. I designed it really to be a place of sanctuary and everyone that comes here, I want them to feel like the outside world doesn't exist. You're in like a special personalized Disneyland that I created for everybody. I love that. And it definitely does feel a lot like Disneyland. You've got the cool McDonald's memorabilia. I see like an amazing pool and you've even got a sauna and hot tub here. Yeah, definitely. And it's a genuine Canadian sauna, which goes with the theme of, you know, um, snow and heat and all of those kind of crazy things. So I just hope everyone loves it as much as I do. A lot of people or most people have never been able to come in a Futuro before. And that was, you know, a big factor in why I did this because I mean, there are a few churros around in the world, but most of them are in private hands or museums or things like that. And I want this one to be available for everybody to see and experience what Maddie Saronin wanted people to experience back in the 60s and 70s. And now the house. This is entirely constructed out of fiberglass, isn't it? Completely. It's got like a layer on the outside and then foam insulation between and another layer of fiberglass and yeah. Fully insulated. And of course that's what makes this incredible shape possible. Yeah. And I absolutely love the spaceship aesthetic. It just really makes you smile when you look at it, doesn't it? It does. Even though I built the thing and I've been coming here for a year every single day, as soon as I come through that driveway and look at it, it puts a smile on my face every time. It never gets old. Yeah. <laughs> and it's quite funny as well because in the 60s when this was designed, it was called the Futuro House. This was sort of how people envisioned that we would actually be living today, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So everybody was meant to own one of these houses. That was Matty's, you know, vision that everyone would have one and they'd be able to move it with them and go on vacation all the time back in the 60s. Sadly, it didn't happen, but <laughs> that is why I built it, so people can come and experience it today. <laughs> I love that. That's so cool. <laughs> and especially with the shape of this house, it's quite difficult to get a feel for the dimensions. So what size is the house? So it's eight metres wide and four metres high. And you have done a lot of work renovating this place, haven't you? Yes, a full year, full time to renovate it to the standard. <laughs> so when you first got it, what was it like? Derelict. It was on the west coast um, by Fox Glacier and an older gentleman owned it as like a white bait stand and he'd go over there on his boat and go and catch white bait and 
probably cook it and eat it in there. I don't know. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Yeah. I can't imagine one of these as a white bait stand. Wow. Yeah. And can you talk to me a bit about the process of doing the renovation? Had you ever done something like this before? No, and I had an amazing friend called Jason, and he helped me with some of the stuff that I couldn't do. I had the vision, but he had a lot of the brains to really create some of the things that I didn't even think were possible. And the style of this house really is just so cool. I love the way that they've done the window design in this as well. It just really has that UFO look, doesn't it? Yes, it does. But funny story for you, Matty Saronin, the guy who made it in the 60s, he didn't design it to look like a spaceship at all. So when he went and designed it, he did his mathematical equations, and this shape, the ellipse, and everything about it is mathematical perfection for wind and like, you know, snow load on the top and all that kind of stuff. So it really, it does look like a spaceship, but it wasn't designed to look like a spaceship. It's designed to be mathematical perfection. I don't believe it because if he didn't design it to look like a spaceship, he never would have built the hatch like that. Yeah, he probably should have thought that one through. <laughs> <laughs> And now, obviously we can't see it because it is daytime, but you have done some outrageous things with the lighting here, haven't you? Yes, so everywhere around, full LED lighting. My vision was I wanted it to be like Avatar and like when you're in the forest and the trees are alive and it's like magic. And that's, I think we've, we've achieved that. That is just so mm. cool. And how does power, water and services work in the house? It's grid connected but there's a um, caravan plug underneath it that you just, you know, chuck in there and away she goes. And the water is straight out of the ground, like artesian, you know, fresh Canterbury water. <laughs> Perfect, beautiful. <laughs> well, Nick, this place just looks ridiculously cool from the outside and I cannot wait to see how you've cut out the interior. How do we get inside? Well, come have a look and I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a green button and a red button and you've got a pick. Oh. They always say, never pick the red button, but I'm gonna pick the red button. Hey! That is so cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a way to enter. <laughs> yeah, beats a normal front door, that's for sure. <laughs> it sure does. And you know what, looking at it from this angle, it looks like a giant smiley face, like a, a really happy alien. Yeah, it looks like me after a couple of drinks. <laughs> <laughs> cool, well let's take a look inside after cool. you. Let's go. This is so cool. When you walk into a space like that, it just feels a bit adventurous, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely, it's incredible. <laughs> and it's nice having this kind of little foyer upon entering the home as well. Absolutely, so you can like put, you know, like your shoes down here or something like that if it's a bit, you know, muddy outside. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I love what you've done with the plants up here as well, having the sort of greenery with that almost like futuristic look still with the, the red light coming through. Yeah, man, like more lights are better in my opinion. <laughs> Definitely, and just to the right of me here, it looks like we've got a kid's room yes but you can fit an adult in there as well if you want to but the top bunks are definitely for children they're a little bit tight for adults <laughs> yeah so designed in the 70s this was kind of like designed for the nuclear family really wasn't it it was always meant to be a holiday or a vacation home like so you probably wouldn't live in it full time but yeah i would <laughs> yeah totally why wouldn't you <laughs> yeah. who wouldn't want to live here yeah exactly and then what do we have behind that door there this is our bathroom Look at that. This is a very cool design. Again, this is one of the huge advantages to having the whole house really built out of fiberglass is it's already waterproof, right? Yep. So this room, you can get wet from the roof all the way down to the floor. No issue. Very cool. So it was all just actually done like a wet room. No separation between the toilet and shower or anything. Nothing. A full wet room and yeah, all you have is this little shower curtain to protect the door and away you go. <laughs> Very cool. Nice and easy. Yeah. And the space just looks so cool. I love the way there's the window right above the basin and it just kind of gives it this very kind of cozy bathroom feel, doesn't it? It's very cozy and like... When you're having a shower in there, it turns into almost like a sauna. That's really cool. <laughs> Very nice. And I see you've got the conventional flushing toilet there, so you yes. were able just to plumb it into a septic here on site? Yes, but because again, it is a portable home, you can just sort of like detach the um, sewer lines and away you go. <laughs> nice and easy. Yeah. And now let's step into the main part of the home. Let's go. Wow, dude, this place is absolutely incredible. 
It's so interesting that it's got all of these cool futuristic shapes, and yet somehow you've also kind of created this wicked 70s vibe in here too. I mean, that's exactly what I wanted to do because this entire design is a full recreation of Maddie Saronin's original Futuro house. So it's probably about 90% there. Some things I couldn't do because it's just impossible, but this is as close to an original Futuro house that you can get in the world. That is just so cool. I love how you've obviously spent a lot of time collecting memorabilia as well, because I can see all these cool little things everywhere. Like, is that a 70s television? Yes, there's two 70s televisions and a radio. <laughs> that is just so cool. And I just love the way that you've styled this place. Obviously, you've tried to keep close to the architect's original vision, but there's just so much color and vibrance in here. Totally, eh? The 1970s to me, like, embodied experimentation and color and joy and happiness. And that's how I feel when I'm in here anyway. <laughs> totally. And you're so right. That was the feeling of the era, eh? It's like, forget about gray, let's make it orange. Yeah, and a lot of people were like, oh, the purple might not work. But I think it works absolutely amazing with everything in here, eh? Like, it's just, it looks incredible. I think what I really love about what you've done here is I can just see how you've tried to make this whole place an experience and sort of celebrate all of the cool aspects of design of the time. And not just of this house, but just of that era in general. Yeah, totally. Like, even over here, we've got a Luigi Calani table hybrid chair that I imported from Belgium. They're incredibly rare, and I just want everyone that comes here to actually be able to sit down on it and experience the real 1970s and not a knockoff. The 1970s was sort of the last era where we made stuff that was designed to last. Absolutely. Like, that thing's been around for 50 years, and other than a little bit of wear and tear, you It'll be around for another 50. Easy. <laughs> Definitely. And the chessboard. What a cool centerpiece for the home. Oh, everybody loves it. It's so much fun. And everyone can sit around on the big shag pile rug and just have a good time. And from the outside, it looked like a really small space. But standing in here now, it's just incredibly spacious. And I'm guessing that's all to do with the sort of deception of the space. Well, the thing is, you're actually living on the walls. The floor pretty much stops here, right? Yeah. But this here is actually on the walls. So when you're sitting on it like this, you're actually on the walls. Yeah. <laughs> Which gives you that sense of space. And I think adding to that sense of space is also the window design because it gives you these panoramic views, but also sort of really interestingly frames the outside. Yeah, it does. And the way that it's just a little bit lower gives you this really interesting aspect that you don't get in a normal home. And you're actually looking down as well as out, which I think is amazing. And the lighting in here is really cool as well. You've obviously spent a bit of time seeking out some really cool light fixtures. So the lighting is by Werner Panton, and these are like an iconic design of his, and I had to have them. Do you know what I mean? They weren't exactly original to the Futuro, but they're original to the period, and I think they just work with their roundedness, and it's on theme. Perfect fit. And this couch is just such a cool feature as well. I love the way that it sort of really extends and wraps around the room. Yeah, so in the 70s, they used to love having fondue parties and it was about having, you know, all of your friends and family around and being really, you know, in an intimate space and enjoying yourself. And I feel like Matty, the designer, built it like this for that very reason. And you've got the TV up there on the wall, so a space to sit back and just relax as well. Yeah, and watch Living Big in a Tiny House. That's what I do. Of course. <laughs> what else is on TV? Exactly. And over here we have the kitchen, and this is a compact space, but it looks like you've got everything you need. Yeah, you've got your fridge, your microwave, your countertop, storage, everything. Yeah, and this is all molded out of fiberglass as well, isn't it? Yeah, so the whole point of the Futuro is that it was, you know, all made out of molds and they could just pump them out mass production. So, yeah, everything's made out of fiberglass. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And then over here we have your bedroom, and this looks like a really interesting design. Yeah, so it's got some really cool features. You can either have it as a king-size bed, which is incredible for a space this small, but you can push it in, and it gives you space to get changed and pull this cool little curtain down, and yeah. That is such a clever feature. So when that pushes into the wall, where does it go? So it goes into the second bedroom, which is behind that wall, and the bed in the second bedroom is just a little bit higher. You wouldn't tell, but when you push it in, it goes inside of the bed in the second room. 
And is that an original feature of the Futuro? No, it isn't. The layout that I've done here is exactly to spec from the original, but we changed that design just because we thought it was awesome. <laughs> Heck yeah, what a cool idea. Yeah. And you've got a bunk in here as well. Yeah, we've got a small bunk up there that's made for small children and the same on the other side. Excellent. And I guess it sort of harks back to this original design where it was designed as a holiday home and a place where people could come together. So it was important to be able to sleep a lot of people. Yeah, it was just designed as a place where people could enjoy each other's company. What a cool design. So looking around here, one of the things that I notice is there doesn't seem to be a lot of storage in here. Not really, no. I guess because they designed it as a vacation home, you know, you can put your bags underneath the bed, you've got storage all underneath here, but yeah, maybe storage is a little bit limited. <laughs> yeah. And now that you've finished your innovation, what's it like to be in this space? Oh, I'm just so proud of it. It's incredible. It really feels like you've gone back in time and you're living in the past it's amazing. I just get a feeling of being somewhere really special. And again, it comes back to just that feeling of fun and magic. I love that feeling of waking up here and looking at the big curved roof and the colors and feeling like I'm living in the past, but yet in the future. And also in a design that never really got a chance to thrive. And I feel like in a way, now that Matty has sadly passed away, that I've been you know, handed the reins to sort of make him proud, kind of, you know what I mean? And this is, this is where we're at. <laughs> I can see there's a lot of work that's gone into this project and you've really done a great job of seeking out all these really interesting, unique things to add to it. Can we talk about the budget that was involved in bringing this project to life? Well, I was really, really fortunate to get in early before the craze around Futuro Houses began. So I paid $50,000 for this unit. Wow. When it was in a pretty bad state, but still solid. Then it cost $3,000 to helicopter it out in pieces to the road. And then to bring it back to this state was another fifty dollars to $60,000. Fantastic. Yeah. What an incredible result for that budget. Yeah. And you've even got a Futuro House tattoo, don't you? Yes, I do. Here he is. That is so cool. 2012, representing my first Futuro House that I ever brought. And so now that this project is complete, what's next on the cards for you? Round two. You're going to do another one of these? Another one of these, yes. <laughs> Very cool. What's your vision for that? So I'm going to learn from this one and do it even better in a different location. Nick, this really is such a cool project. I've seen these on the internet before, but this is my first time actually getting to stand in one and experience it, and it's just such a treat for me. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. The Futuro House really is such an interesting concept. It's like this weird juxtaposition of feeling like you're in the past, yet simultaneously in the future. What Nick has done in this renovation has absolutely brought this home back to life. I really am so incredibly impressed with what he's created here.